So welcome to this edition of Going Deep with me, Richard Mills. And we welcome, yeah, an interesting character and a lively fellow. This is Mon Abrea of Abrea Consulting Group, or otherwise known as the Philippine Tax Wiz. And yeah, quite a back uh, background. He's made a name for himself in a short uh, time, at least in my view. And talked about a lot in the business community as uh, possibly the next commissioner for BIR. We'll see whether that happens, but I know there's a lot of people in the sidelines really uh, promoting him for the position. So we'll have an interesting session and please welcome Mon Abrea. Glad to have you, Mon. Thank you, Richard, and uh, nice um, joining you here in your uh, podcast. Very good. Well, Mon, Maybe if you could just tell us a short uh, history of your career and, and who you are as a person. What, what can you tell us? Well, um, I started in the academe. Uh, I became a department head of uh, San Beda College uh, Accountancy Department at a very young age, immediately after my CPA board exam. I was 21. Um, I became the youngest academic head and uh, for five years, I stayed there. Uh, when uh, and actually it's, it was also the time when uh, I did my graduate studies uh, at the Ateneo Graduate School. Uh, but since the pay is not that much, uh, I started doing consulting <laughs> on the side. So okay. well, it's a noble job, but it doesn't really pay that much. So uh, I started doing consulting on the side. And uh, when I left the academe, that's when uh, the opportunity to help in good governance, um, uh, which was led by Dr. Jesse Sanislao, and one of the agencies that they wanted to uh, help is the Bureau of Internal Revenue. So, but they need to demystify it. It seems nobody understands why it's so complicated, why there's so much corruption, why it's just so difficult to deal with BIR. That was more than 10 years ago. Okay. So they said, uh, well, you're a CPA, you will understand. Why don't you join the BIR, become an examiner and study the entire tax system and give us your proposal. So after two years, so I joined BIR in 2009. After two years, I left. I said, it's hopeless. I'd rather leave or I'll burn my soul to hell. So then they said, why? Well, the, the corruption is too, uh, it's, it's already uh, uh, systemic. And uh, the only way to oh. deal with it is either we abolish the bureau or we, uh, we privatize it or we automate everything. And uh, that's, and the rest is history. So, more or less, um, my, uh, my background as an uh, accountancy uh, graduate helped me to really understand not just the numbers, but to analyze really uh, the cost benefit of all this reform, all these processes, which, which is uh, a concern of every business. We don't just want output or outcome. We want to make sure it's cost efficient. And uh, in this tax administration, the same, uh, th that's the same lens that I am using until now. Uh, what is the most cost-efficient way of collecting taxes? How do we reduce corruption, if not eradicate? I see. Wow. Okay, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah, Jess, Justice Stanislaw, he's uh, certainly got a good reputation. Um, well, maybe if you could tell us then about your organization and what you do uh, for organizations and, and, and individuals, Mon. Well, when I left BIR uh, in 2010, uh, I started the advocacy. Uh, it's a nationwide tax road show where uh, I literally have from one school, one province, one town, one barangay, talking about taxes. Why do we have to pay taxes? Where, uh, why is taxes important? <laughs> but after a few months, we started running out of money. So I oh. ran to Dr. Estanislao and told him, um, I don't think we can continue the advocacy uh, because <laughs> we don't have much cash. Well, we have to think of a way to institutionalize the reforms that you're suggesting. Then uh, I met Dr. Bernie Villegas and he said, yes. Juan, you cannot just beg for money. Why don't you make money? Well, how do I make money if I'm asking people to pay taxes? Start a consulting business where you uh, where you put uh, conscience, help people pay the right taxes. I don't think anybody will pay me to help them pay the right taxes. Everyone wants to avoid taxes. You can do it. You have that advocacy <laughs> integrated in the business model. That's how the Abrea Consulting Group was uh, established because of Dr. Bernie's advice. In fact, he was one of our uh, 
uh, directors during the early years of uh, Abrea Consulting Group. He was the one telling me, no, we have to make money. Uh, which, which industry, which market, which are the tax, who are the taxpayers who can afford these services? We have to let them know that you are the expert, that you're the only one who can save them, help their businesses, deal with their taxes. And that's where, uh, and right now we have the Asian Consulting Group. It's already a corporation with uh, several investors. And we have also uh, created the subsidiary. It's the uh, Taxis PH. It's a digital solution. Uh, we just launched the mobile app with the Bureau of Internal Revenue yesterday. And now taxpayers are able to file their income tax returns using our mobile app for free. So that is the, the product of the pandemic for, for ACG. While helping people pay their taxes, educating them, uh, we use um, technology to make sure that we, if we cannot automate fully BIR right now, we will help taxpayers by automating their compliance through our mobile app. Interesting. And maybe this isn't meant to be, you know, a salesy place, but, but maybe if you can tell, how do people download that? They, they go to Play Store. And yeah, Google Play, Play or App Store. They can okay. just download Tax with PH and the uh, you register and you can access all the features, tax calculator, tax calendar, only chat, and even the online filing, everything for free. But ECG uh, really helps uh, the big companies, those with a uh, regular BIR audit or tax cases. And uh, because of our credibility as advocates, BIR cannot harass us or ask for under the table. I guess that is our best competitive advantage. We are able to settle huge cases, billions of assessments, and uh, in a... Uh, in a snap of a finger, we are able to come up with a compromise settlement above table legally and help our clients save taxes without compromises. Okay. Now, okay, you, you raised a good point though, because there's some people who, like you said, they're afraid of dealing with BIR, either because there's, for various reasons, you know what mm. I'm talking about here, uh, Mon, but are you able to... Um, so you're able to help these people and, and keep them out of trouble and really so so this is one of your main what uh, ways you, you help people is that a fair statement? Yeah, we uh, well we can go uh, be straightforward. We help them fix their tax problems. So we fix their tax problems, uh, restore their peace of mind, and let them deal with BAR without fear, without this harassment, and uh, everything is above board. I think that's the. That's the, the real uh, competitive advantage because it's more than the money, peace of mind, that they can grow their business, make more money without uh, worrying that BIR will run after them or will file a case against them. Sure. Okay. Well, that's a very, very compelling story, Mon. Now, mm -hmm. could you tell us again, you know, a lot of people are, they think about starting their own business and so forth, but what were the circumstances or processes that you took to start your own business? Honestly, 10 years ago, Richard, it was so difficult. Yes. Number one, uh, during the first year, we were penalized left and right because we didn't know that once you register, you have to keep filing uh, returns, updates, uh, GIS. Uh, you have to go to SSS, but Ibig will help one at a time. So it was like, do I start a business or do I just register for one year? That was how difficult it was 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, and I, we keep telling those who are uh, going to us, we can relate. We underwent the same experience, uh, but we just have to make sure you have a complete list of what to do or you ask somebody else to uh, do it for you. Just make sure um, at a reasonable price or to be really cost efficient. But now uh, um, I can say that uh, starting a business is much uh, easier, especially with the digital economy, because during the lockdown, uh, Richard, even the government was forced to practically yes. automate their processes because they were all working from home. So yes. that, that, in a way, to me, is a blessing in disguise because we've been delaying it. I don't know why. Why we can't just automate sure. everything? Why do we have to go to, to government agencies and talk to the head? Why can't we just click and transact with the government without knowing who's the, the head, the commissioner? We actually should not care at all who's in charge right. as long as we process and comply. So right now, I can honestly tell you that uh, because of the ease of doing business law, uh, things are moving uh, quite fast compared to 10 years ago, which, which uh, feels like a lifetime before you get a registration completed 
or a piece of document from any government agency and you needed to know somebody from inside, you know, the mayor, the commissioner, before things move. Now, uh, I think uh, it's much different now because of the digital platforms. It's really the digitalization, really? which if you will recall, uh, BIR was hopeless 10 years ago. And my, my, one of the, my proposal is to automate BIR. And this it is was. exactly what's happening now. So thank you, Lord, for this bad experience that forced our government <laughs> to step up. <laughs> Yeah, I remember you've been saying this for a long time, uh, Mon. So yeah, it's 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 coming now, though. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Now, if I can ask kind of a loaded question, because you know a lot of people think about starting their business, but there's all kinds of good reasons why now is not the time, and soon, but not you know in the future. But are you pleased you took the plunge to be an entrepreneur, or would you rather have worked successfully with somebody else? I know. I think I know your answer, but. <laughs> well, during the first three years, I think I doubted and I almost uh, ran away almost yeah. every night when I couldn't sleep because I needed to deal with the, with the payables. I need to do the vouchers, the reports. I was like, why am I doing this? And uh, I don't know if I shared with you when I was uh, uh, finishing my first book, which, by the way, became the bestseller, the Got the Question About Taxes. I was, I failed to attend the wedding of one of my good friends, a celebrity that was the biggest, most celebrated uh, wedding uh, with the president, Ding Dong Dantes and Marian Rivera. I was not, I was not able to attend it because I was finishing the book and I, I cannot leave the office and I was sleeping in our office, literally. So if, uh, you, if you will ask me during the first three years, I'd say, just pay me well, I'll leave everything. But now, no way. This is exactly the life that I want. This is exactly what I want to do. I get to help a lot of people. I get to help the government. I get to influence uh, the media. I get to influence policy making, legislation, and I get to earn decent money. I get to travel. Okay. I get to provide everything for my family, help my friends, uh, provide employment. What more can I ask for? More Probably more tax problems, so there's more revenue for our company, <laughs> but really, being an entrepreneur uh, is really getting the best of both worlds. It is. That's a, and it's good you're such a lively guy able to uh, create the energy uh, about it too. But a friend, of, a friend of mine, when I started business early on, he said to me, Richard, I would rather be the captain of my own rowboat than the number two of the world's largest luxury cruise liners, what he said. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's true. So it is fun. And we encourage other people to to take the plunge. But now getting back to your tax advocacy, Amon, because this is a big thing for you and you're well known uh, for this. What, I mean, other than, oh, you mentioned uh, bringing technology into um, tax collection and payments over, what, what would you describe as your over, I mean, do you have a, like a vision of the future for taxes? What, what would that be? How, how would you describe it? Well, honestly, I, I, uh... I've uh, sent that already to the president. I gave him okay. my proposal. It's the flat tax. I'm proposing oh. now a flat tax for all companies with uh, total assets of 100 million and below. I believe that 10% uh, flat tax will really save us so much money. We don't need audit and uh, we will save a lot of uh, struggling businesses because they don't need to pay consultants unnecessarily, deal okay. with uh, courts tax for tax cases, and BIR will not be bothered checking all the returns because it's just flat at 10%. No more income, no more business tax, withholding tax, and all these different taxes. So uh, I honestly believe that is the best way to uh, broaden our taxpayer base, encourage even the sari sari store. But uh, we increase the threshold of marginal income earners. Let's say for anybody who's earning below 1 million, you're tax free because we, the government, wants you to be rich wants you sure. to be a middle class. So uh, will that uh, mean we will lose collection? No, 65, more than 65% of our collections are from our large taxpayers. The large corporations will stay. Well, we can incentivize them, remove the 12% back, bring it back to 3% sales tax. Anyway, nobody wants to pay 12% back. So the difference uh, with my mindset, uh, Richard, is that the, the government is very collection driven. Legislation is very policy driven. Me, I'm practical. Would I want to pay that or not? If not, why will I impose that tax? I myself don't want to pay it. 
So rather implement a taxation that is acceptable to everyone, so easy to implement, no need to audit. So I guess flat tax is the future. Interesting. Now, Mon, though, but how does the calculation, would, would the government collect enough taxes if they did that? Yes, because the largest payers are above 100 million in assets. So what, what we are targeting, uh, Richard, is practically the 99.98% MSMEs. Okay. Why would you burden them if they're paying less than 10,000 or less right. than 20,000 pesos? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> that would sure, you're, like you said, okay, would sure make it easier for people and not so scary to deal with uh, uh, taxes and so forth. Okay. All right, that's a very compelling story. Well, hopefully, Mon. Yeah, Richard, did I convince you? Because I need to make sure I convince you. <laughs> oh, I... I, need your, I need your help. You know, if it doesn't materialize under Duterte, we need to rally that to make sure it will be a priority economic agenda of the next president. Remember during the Aquino administration, we were all crying because the income tax was not reduced. But immediately when Duterte came, in, uh, came on board, he adopted it as his priority program. So our, our personal income tax was reduced. Our corporate income tax two weeks ago is now yeah. down from 30 to 20%. Years ago, I was the one who was proposing 20%. That's right, okay. It may, it, the 10% may sound impossible now, but believe me, that is the most practical and efficient way if we want to involve everyone and if we want to empower the MSMEs without losing the, the tax revenue from them. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, that's a compelling story, uh, Mon. I want to hear really, that. Uh, that I know compelling. you got a lot of. What's that? I want to hear that from you. That it is compelling. Okay. 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 It is. <laughs> I, no, did it well. is. I did well. I did well. It is. It would sure, but also reducing the the fear people have of BIR, and it prevents a lot of people from starting their own businesses or expanding exactly. them because they don't want to show that they they're making some money and things like that. Um, okay, and, well, we wish you Richard well on that. Now, and Richard, especially those yeah. who are doing online, do you expect them to declare everything if it is that complicated when they yeah. can make money online without government intervention? If we want everyone on board, make it acceptable for everyone. Sure. Okay. Well, that would be revolutionary and certainly a big boost to the economy. Holy smokers. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, Mon, what do you think are some of the main reasons people start their own businesses? Like, like what was it for you? You were inspired by this uh, purpose or well, what? Well, normally, um, we wanted to make a difference. There's a problem and we want to solve it. In my case, the tax problem. I wanted, I wanted right. to solve it many years ago. And uh, there, it's not bad to even... Um, uh, make it a revenue stream, especially if you want to sustain it and help more people. So I yeah. think uh, most entrepreneurs, they, uh, they started, they're there, and uh, they, they grew their business because they wanted to solve more problems. They, make, they want to offer solutions to, to the world. And that's exactly why entrepreneurs are, are the new heroes, because they're literally um, um, breaking all barriers and making all things uh, initially impossible as possible. Okay. And well, maybe if we just go outside, you know, a bit about uh, other people who are thinking about starting their own business, what advice would you give to them about how to start their own business? Number one, uh, you really have to uh, be passionate about it, that you know yeah. what you're getting into. Do yeah. your homework. Don't just dream to be an entrepreneur, to be a CEO, or to be a boss. It takes so much responsibility, and uh, it takes so much time, not just money. And before you even think of uh, raising the capital or loaning money, make sure you know your core expertise. What are you offering to the market? It's not just about the unique selling proposition. It's more of the value proposition. Why will people pay you? Why will people waste their time listening to you? What can you, how can you help them? It's not that how can I make money? No, if, you, if that is your perspective, you will not last. It's not how you can make money, how I can help people. How can you help them? And that it should not just be compelling, but cost efficient. That you get, 
they get your uh, services or products that they were happy, satisfied, and the value for money is there. Okay. Now that's uh, well put, uh, Mon. And, and I got to say, you've always been a very good, you know, marketing personality. <laughs> you know, and I mean that in a very positive way, Mon. I, I, it's very important in business, but not everybody has the same personality as you have, Mon. But maybe if you could help people, you know, what, what were some of the key factors behind your success in marketing your services? Because you've become known as, you know, you, you, you came up with this tax whiz, um, you know, kind of logo thing. And, and it's really worked out well. You've really, you know, you mentioned the unique selling proposition. And that's mm -hmm. just something that you have really created for yourself. Well, um, another, yeah. Yeah. What well, Richard, I have uh, three uh, answers for that. First is mentor. Okay. You really have to look for a mentor, someone who will not have vested interest on you, on your money, on your business, but will really give you um, not just world-class advice, but really uh, invaluable insights, strategic insights on how to go through uh, your plans. Remember, if you ask a friend, sometimes friend can be very complacent. You can do it. Yes, we believe in you. Who cares if you believe in him? Will people pay him? So somebody has to tell you. And you know, who, who, I had a lot of mentors, Richard, and who were very cruel in telling me, no one, that won't work. No one, I won't pay you a penny. You better give me a better uh, solution. So mentor. Next one, I think this is also the gift of Asia CEO, network. More than the network, more than the money, you have to really build your network. Don't just build a network of rich people. Build a network of people who are willing to help, who are willing to support you, who will really um, rally behind you. And I'm blessed from the academe, business sector, like Asia CEO, the media, they were all very uh, supportive. And um, I honestly think uh, uh, having few mentors who are really good and a huge network who, who, may not, uh, who may not know exactly what I was doing many years ago, but they, they just keep supporting me and uh, that's why uh, I'm here, right? So, and uh, the third one, Training. Don't Training. ever feel you're good enough. Always make sure you keep learning. Uh, now that there's semi several webinars, you might think, Richard, I'm talking all the time. No, I quietly attend webinars. I read a lot of articles. I make sure before my breakfast, I check on the latest tax updates. I write articles and let people criticize it so that I keep learning. And uh, I... Before I don't do this, Richard, I always ask my people, what do you think? Do you think I'm okay? Do you think that's good? Uh, am I wrong? Because you will learn a lot if you listen to people. And you have to train yourself, not just to be the best, but to be better version of yourself. So mentor, network, training, lifetime, learning. Very good. Very good. And your mentors, I know, would you say Dr. Bernie Villegas and Jess? Yes. Jess or, Ber okay. Bernie... Bernie, honestly, is my uh, mentor in making money because, <laughs> because Bernie even uh, gave us a lot of clients. And, you know, when That's Bernie true. speaks, nobody questions. That's so true. if Bernie says, Mona Brea will help you, okay, I'll get in touch with Mona Brea. <laughs> so imagine a CEO of a huge conglomerate, a foreign company will just call, get in touch with me. It's Bernie. <laughs> so... If you don't get Bernie as your mentor, get Bernie as your director because Bernie is literally uh, uh, a sleeping giant. I mean, the moment he, he, uh, he calls somebody, that's it. His credibility, his uh, reputation precedes him. And uh, uh, it's important to have people like uh, Bernie on board. And I was, I, I, we, were, we were very grateful, Richard, because I think for two or three years, he served in our board. And... You won't imagine Bernie Villegas walking in, walking in in our conference room. He will just sit, close his eyes, but the, ne the next yeah. time he opens his mouth, he will literally shatters everyone's idea. Oh, no, no, no. I think uh, we should... Uh, that's it. Bernie's talking. Everyone's listening. So better get Bernie on board. <laughs> that's true. That's good advice. Now, but you're also very good at... You, you know, you mentioned the network, I think, is what you uh, said. Um, Network, yes. Certainly, 
when you spoke at our events, I, I remember you were, you're a good, a, a compelling speaker. People come, they want to hear your, your story. And, and that's, that's a good uh, bit of advice, Mon, because a lot of smart well, people. Well, Richard, just to be frank and uh, also to be grateful to Asia CEO Forum, we got a lot of big clients from Asia CEO oh, who right. are now my friends, who are now my friends, like Virginia Lane, the Lane family. Okay. Oh, As in so literally the that. entire family, they're now in Sydney. We are in touch almost every week. We call each other and uh, uh, Jerry and Virg Virginia. I mean, that's the gift of Asia CEO Network. Uh, we, you yeah, became friends. So More than a business. You don't always talk about business. You check on each other. But yeah. when there's a need for professional service, you're top of mind. They get in touch with you. I'm so glad to hear you say that. That is uh, very compelling. I, I'm going to feel good. For the rest of the day um yeah yeah but but also you true, need to... i think i have not said it enough or i may have not expressed it clearly but That's thank you asia ceo with the award that you gave me i was like people were asking me wow asia ceo young leader award then this is the funny question so are you still young yeah yeah that was like five years ago <laughs> and remember uh richard i got the 10 outstanding young men of the philippines after I received Asia CEO Award. Oh, really? And I got a lot more awards after it. Alumni Award, um, Ruffler Award, um, what else? Uh, Metro Bank Award. I got all those awards. The first is Asia CEO. So thank you very much. 2015 was the start of uh, a whole new world for me because more people locally and internationally uh, recognized me. And I started doing international roadshows with our embassies. So... Uh, you can talk to a Philippine embassy in Canada, in US, in Europe, anywhere in Europe, Asia, they know me because of all these awards and they invited me to talk uh, to their investors, to our overseas Filipinos abroad and uh, hopefully after this uh, pandemic, I'll start traveling again. Good. Okay. Well, good to hear, Mon. But I mean, you, you stood out. So that's why you won the, uh, the award. I'm glad to hear others as well. Well, Mon, maybe we could talk a little bit about you as a person. Now, how would you describe yourself? Are you uh, introverted, extroverted? Were you good at school or not so good at school? Did you follow the rules? Were you rebellious? How, how would you describe yourself? Okay, I hope no one will uh, protest when I uh, answer that. I am actually an introvert. When I'm not working, I'm just at home. No, seriously. When I'm not working, I'm just at home. I don't answer phone calls. I don't text. Uh, I just watch Netflix. I read books. Um, during the quarantine, if not for work, I'm literally off the grid. I don't really do as much. In fact, when I left social media for more than three months, I people really don't know what's happening. Because uh, remember, uh, Richard, I use social media to promote our advocacy. Sure. It was never about me that I am smart, that I am good, that I am the best. Never. No single post that I tell that. It's always about the advocacy. So I, I would say uh, introvert. Well, uh, well, Richard, probably you can ask my, uh, my excess because when we're on a date, I don't talk. I just eat. I just, oh yeah, okay, like that. But when I'm at work, when I am in the media, when I need to promote something, it's like uh, there's a switch. <laughs> but after it, like after this one, I'm just inside this conference hall, room. Nobody gets in. I'm just working. So, okay. yeah. So introvert. And uh, at school, not really good. I was bullied when I was studying. Uh, I'm short. I don't have... Uh, uh, what's this? Uh, pointed nose. <laughs> uh, I'm not white. I'm literally uh, uh, brown skin. Um, I don't. I can't speak English that well. When I was in elementary, that was my post uh, last night when I posted about this podcast. I was telling people oh, that yeah. when I was in grade six, and that English teacher of mine, who's a nun, is following me in Facebook, and she would always comment that she's very happy that uh, I've turned out to be a good and responsible person. I was like, why? What did you think when I was in grade six? Because I was literally uh, the not just bullied, but I, I'm not good. I'm not good at, in school. I'm not performing well until um, I realized that I wanted to make my parents proud of me. I, I wanted to get the attention of my father. I think during my Rebecca's interview, I, I said that. 
because my father always tells uh, uh well he always compares me with other boys and i was like ah oh, where where will i be good at i'm not good in basketball i'm not good in school i'm not good in english i cannot sing ah oh. so i started studying hard and uh, lo and behold uh, i became top in our school uh, i graduated uh, salutatorian uh, elementary and high school not because i'm brilliant but because I really wanted to uh, make my parents, especially my father, uh, proud of me. That, that's the only uh, reason. So if you ask me, uh, Richard, am I smart? Uh, do I deserve what I, um, uh, what I have right now? Uh, do I need all these things? I'll only tell you one thing. I am very hardworking. Okay. That's okay, it. I've heard that. All right. And so you mentioned your, your parents, Mon. Now, how would you say they raised you? Were they really strict? Did they let you do what you want? How would you uh, tell us about that? Well, it's actually a good balance because my father will always dictate. You see, he, he tells me what he wants. He wants me to be an engineer, a lawyer. So every week I change my career. Uh, okay, lawyer. Oh, okay, doctor. So he's very strict, but my, my mom is very supportive and, and she allows me to, uh, to express myself, to do what I want with, of course, with the, the care of a mom, uh, take care, oh, avoid this, avoid that. So I think we were um, brought up really well, uh, very to be very respectful, uh, honest, and fair. My mom and my father would never tolerate um, uh, lies or uh, being unfair or bullying other people or even uh, uh, taking revenge. So whenever they feel uh, that I had a bad day, they would just ask me what happened, but they will not tell me to do uh, something to get revenge. So they just say, okay, uh, just let it go. Let it slide. Make sure next time you just avoid these guys and do this, focus on your studies. So, and I, I saw it. We have a very simple lifestyle, but we were well uh, provided. Uh, we didn't feel that we needed anything else. So the family uh, is enough for us to be happy during my um, childhood. Okay. All right. And as a, well, I mean, you've seen a lot of people now working with, uh, you know, very successful people and so forth, and you see differences in, in your own staff and others. Do you think CEOs like you are born that way, or do you think they are made? You I know? honestly think, I honestly think, uh, I think it's influence. It's made, born and made, born in, in terms of um, the characters, the the, the DNA, because my dad is an entrepreneur. My is mom uh, is the finance uh, person. Uh, okay. My dad is very poor in money. He's just keeps spending. My mom is very thrifty. She's the one who manages the money of the family. So um, I think I got both the DNA of my mom and dad, but influence. If not for Jesse Stanislaw, if not for Bernie Villegas, I don't think I'll be here. I have not even thought of starting my own business, Richard until I had that chat with Bernie. I swear. Okay. It never crossed my mind that I will start or a business simply because the family business got bankrupt because of the bad experiences of my dad. I got traumatized. I don't know if I've shared with you, but from a very uh, well-off family or uh, upbringing, I, I, I lived for 10 years in the slum area, literally in squatters area. And I promised myself, I'll work hard and get my family out of poverty. And it didn't cross my mind that I'll have to start a business to be rich or to be better off. Never. Until the chat with Bernie. So influence. Because if I did not cross path with Bernie, I think I'll still be employed. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Now, uh, something that entrepreneurs or many people talk about is sales experience. What's your opinion on, I mean, how would you rate your own sales experience and how important do you think sales experience is for in, in business, uh, Mon? Well, number one, for practical uh, reason and sustainability uh, issues, if you don't, if you cannot project revenues and if you don't know if you'll make money, then there's no point of starting a business. We, let, let's be uh, very uh, straightforward on, about that. Sure. But True. the thing is, you cannot do hard selling. People hate that. People hate that. Yeah. They don't want people being too pushy, being too uh, uh, aggressive in uh, imposing what you need. Uh, but from my experience, I always think of what's in it for them. What's really their benefit? What's their need? And how can I really help them? If I can't help, I won't even dare offer my service. In fact, I have a lot of friends, Richard, 
whom I turned down. They wanted me to handle their finance. They wanted me to handle this and that. I told them, I know, I don't think I can help you on that, but I can uh, refer probably uh, uh, somebody I know who, who does that really well. So don't just think of the money because you, have, you will have a tendency to just get all the jobs, even if you don't have the expertise or the means to actually deliver results. So to me, um, sales is but a consequence of serving the needs of your target market, offering a solution to a problem uh, that is really um, uh, worthwhile for them, value for money. They're willing to pay uh, because they want that problem to be solved. Yeah, okay. That's a good way to put it, Amon. Um, okay, now assessing people in your organization to hire, what attributes do you look for? How, how do you hire them and, and, and what do you... Yeah, what are, what are the characteristics you look for, Mon? You know what? I don't really interview employees, but the, when, when they do courtesy visit, I, always, I only ask one thing. When will you resign and why? <laughs> okay. When will you resign and why? And uh, the moment I hear that uh, they will resign when the, their values, it's no longer aligned with their values or their rights are violated. Okay, you can start now and just let me if you need uh, a pay increase. That's it. Okay. And I tell people who are working with me for more than a year or two, hey, you haven't asked me for an increase. Don't you think you deserve an increase? Or you should probably resign. Because you have to keep improving. I, it cannot be that I'm the boss and I'm the only uh, rich and powerful here. I mean, all of us should grow, should improve our, our lifestyle and get to, to, um, uh, to experience the best of, uh, I mean, uh, the best of everything because we deserve it. So, if you are open to learning and you're willing to really commit yourself to the vision mission of the company, you're in. You can stay here forever as long as you want. Okay, good. Now, Mon, motivation is another thing people talk about as being, you know, born with or something. And what do you, uh, first of all, how do you, uh, how do I put this? Yeah, how, how do you motivate people that you work with and can everybody be motivated? You know what I mean? Do you like honestly some think, Richard, you wonder. Richard yeah. do you honestly think I motivate people? I scare yes. them. I don't motivate them. I just tell them, do you still want to work here? Better know your why. Why are you still here? Because if you cannot answer that anymore, you better leave. As long as you know your why, there's no point in discussing why we have to work together. But the reality, uh, Richard, is we don't get motivated all the time. There will be bad days. There will be months wherein we feel like leaving, re resigning, and running away. I tell them, don't even think that it's only you who thought of that. It also crosses my mind every once in a while, but I keep asking myself, why are we doing this? Why am I still here? Why do, why do I want this? If we get a good answer, then that will help us decide whether to stay, to leave, or whatever we want to do. So I guess um, uh, people, uh, pe those people who are working with me, they appreciate it even more when I joke, when I smile, because they don't hear it and they don't see it as much, except in social media or in interviews where I can be very entertaining. But at work, I'm very serious. I rarely smile at all. But uh, when you see it, when you hear it, it's sincere. So when, uh, like, like uh, last week, because of the lockdown, we had to deal with a lot of... Uh, troubleshooting because we do a lot of online uh, shows. So uh, somebody just uh, left. So a wool absence without official leave and with the laptop, with the files and all. But there is this uh, fine lady who actually coordinated this, who suddenly stepped up, studied StreamYard, Zoom and all. And in two days, she's the one in charge of it. But it was not in her job description. So I told her after the interview with James Reed and Boyabunda, I told her, Wow, you are amazing. And do you think she won't appreciate it? I never say it. I don't say it often, but it's sincere. I was sincere. Yes. So do things. Think as long as you know you're wise and uh, you keep improving and challenging yourself, even the bad days will uh, soon pass. Sure. Okay. Okay. Good advice. Uh, Mon, now you're a little bit younger than, than I am. But more and more people are talking about health. Now, we talked a little bit before about the health uh, crisis going on right now and people are passing away. Do you, I mean, you work long hours in your, your role there. Do you have time for 
you know, exercise or programs, exercise, food, and diet uh, programs that you follow? And if so, uh, how good at you are, are, are you at following them? Yeah, well, uh, one of the things that I've learned from uh, Dr. Jesus and it's now is work-life balance. And we try yeah. to uh, uh, practice here in our office. Uh, uh, foods, uh, meals are served here in the office for free, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we follow a certain uh, uh, sort of nut uh, nutrition uh, 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 guide so that we don't eat pork every day, we don't get beef every day. So, and at the same time, uh, fruits and uh, the healthy drinks um, and uh, before the lockdown, we, are, we have adopted the four-day work week. We only work for four days, and we have three days for weekend. But now, it was reversed. We only go to uh, office three days and four days uh, at home. So right. we, we try to be more productive without spending so much hours or spending more time uh, in the office. So in a way, this uh, new normal helped us to transition quickly. But at the same time, uh, Richard, I try to be a good example. They, uh, especially my EA, she knows that I have time for gym, for swimming, except now because it's uh, uh, restricted. So it's in my, it appears in my schedule. And why is it important? Commitment. So that you are committed because it's written. It's in your calendar. Even if you don't do it regularly, you will be reminded regularly. And that in itself is a way to keep you, bal to keep you to balance, to do the balance. Because it's hard. Um, uh, then uh, whenever I have uh, free time, I really do some sports like I, I enjoy wakeboarding. So, well, very ironic with my style, but yeah, I have some uh, water sports. I enjoy wakeboarding. I like uh, trekking or mountain climbing uh, mm. uh, and uh, eating. I'm <laughs> just eating. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think doing uh, outdoor activities. Even the even the employees, uh, our employees, they also request that they once in a while they want to uh, go out of town. They want to do outdoor activities, or even inside the office, uh, we do some uh, uh, games. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, pong, or uh, uh, video hockey, or uh, uh, zumba, whatever. So <laughs> things like that. Just so it's not boring. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good for you. Um, well, Mon, another issue, you know having a, a, a meaningful partner in life is often you know key to long-term success but what are your plan i know i you're a, a bachelor one of the a rare uh, breed uh, it seems to me but what are your <laughs> long-term plans for a partner do you what, what, what what's your ideas there well, um, honestly uh, i'm looking for um uh, she has uh, well i'm not it's not like a requirement but my mom is really a good, uh, it's really my ideal um, uh, partner. I mean, uh, as a partner, my mom is very caring, simple. Um, she, uh, my future wife should not be in the same industry. It's either she's in a daycare or working in a daycare or a nurse or, or a, uh, not a celebrity, uh, not in a, in a tax or accounting industry. In short, it will be difficult for now because I'm surrounded by those. Those who will not qualify, of course, uh, you get some crushes, you get uh, uh, your, it, some will catch your attention, but really if uh, for a lifetime partner, she has to be uh, very simple, um, not worldly, not materialistic, so that uh, we both enjoy. I want to uh, have an early retirement, uh, so I wanted, uh, and people are surprised, even my friends, are you sure you can be quiet and uh, stay away from the limelight? Yeah, pretty much. I want to be in the far, far, uh, uh, somewhere above the hills or province where I, I can live a very uh, simple and quiet life. So I was planning to meet her in Harvard. Unfortunately, I was not able to go to Harvard, but I don't know. Uh, I think uh, in God's time, um, probably after the tax reform. So I have two or three more years. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay, well, Mon, maybe if I could ask some of your ideas and opinions for the future. The uh, current COVID crisis is, oh, still going, still raging, I guess. It'll be a while before it goes away. But in the future, it will someday get back to some kind of normality, but it won't be the same normal. as we. What do you think is going to change about the future, about your business and other businesses you deal with? Well, obviously, um, it really, uh, if not open, um, uh, allowed everyone to adapt to um, 
technology to the digital economy. Uh, and there, will, there are more business opportunities now in the uh, digital economy, more than ever. Um, I think more people uh, can uh, make a lot of money without a huge capital to have an office, to have a building, equipment, because of these digital platforms, whether online selling, live streaming, uh, uh, through YouTube and podcasts and all. So um, I, I, I think the, it will be good for the economy since uh, Filipinos by nature are really very creative, innovative, more than resilience. Sometimes I hate that it becomes a political excuse <laughs> when things are getting bad, that we are resilient. But more than that, I think uh, we are uh, creative creatures that would never uh, stop thinking of new things and doing things in a different way. So I am very uh, positive, not in COVID, but in the future of uh, the economy, especially in the Philippines, because we, we, can, we can adapt easily and uh, the rest of the world will see that and they continuously see that that Filipinos can, uh, are really the, the best human capital that you can uh, uh, work with, partnered with, invest on. Talagang, uh, that's it. That's uh, uh, very Filipino. With the, with the COVID, I think it's also a wake-up call for the government that they really have to invest on our healthcare system, period. I think it's, it, it's, uh, the, there's no need to argue on that. True, okay. Um, now, you deal with a wide variety of, of companies in different industries and so forth, uh, Mon. What do you see as some of the big um, working with Filipinos overseas? Uh, what are some of the other areas you see as big opportunities for the nation and, and the region, Mon? Honestly, this will uh, come as a surprise since it's far away from the core that we uh, do. But um, I can I can uh, see uh, entertainment um, because of all these digital platforms, um, the the creativity, the artistry, the musicality of a lot of Filipinos, and uh, uh, I met a lot of them in some live streaming app in all these new platforms where they showcase their talents and uh, they earn money without being a professional singer, without being a professional actor, professional uh, uh, writer or uh, director. So uh, that's one, uh, the entertainment. Uh, number two, uh, I think disruption. Uh, we will continue to uh, um, challenge the norm, create more, uh, not, not just app or system, but to really digitalize everything that we have been accustomed to, including yeah. the government. That, Honestly, I see as a, uh, not far, but very near. It's happening already, but I think uh, it will increase uh, the, its momentum after the COVID because uh, people will go, might go back to their usual thing, but there are already a lot of us who have fully adopted, transitioned, pivoted to this new norm, which is uh, digitally enhanced. And um, I think even with our uh, industry, not just the app, uh, Richard, right now, we are able to do assessments without face-to-face, -face, without the typical Zoom. We just create a system, a link, where they just input few information, then we generate an assessment right away. In fact, this year, we are releasing the uh, tax health check. Imagine that. It's like an annual, it's like an executive medical checkup, hmm. annual tax health check. And we just created, created a spreadsheet where if there's a link, you just encode whatever is obvious in your FS or return. But once you have encoded it in our annual tax health check, you get an assessment right away whether you are good, bad in terms of compliance or what are the possible exposure. That's, digital, that's uh, technology. That's not just ex tax expertise. That's technology. It is. Okay. All right. Well, maybe... You know, what are the, some of the things that you think are holding the country back that would really help the nation move ahead? There's your taxing, maybe you could talk about that again, but is there anything else? Well, um, politics is really getting uh, in the way. Um, I think there's a, a need for us to be more um, participative, for us to be more, uh, not too democratic, but uh, to be more strategic. Like, uh, somebody can be a president, but is he, the, is he or she the president that will help us 10, 20 years from now? Or he's okay. just a, con uh, a convenient choice right now. And it's hard because uh, the population, the voting population 
are uh, not as educated as we want them to be. They are still persuaded easily. They are still driven by uh, uh, by um, issues and uh, ayuda or uh, food packs, which is really a bad thing. Um, but uh, to me, uh, if we really want to move this country, we have to see ourselves as part of the solution, as part of the nation. We cannot just be a beneficiary. We have to be responsible citizens, regardless of our status, regardless where we are or how much we make. And if paying taxes is part of that responsibility, we have to pay it, whether it's a peso, a hundred, a thousand, a million. And if everyone will have that disposition with less politics and more strategic insights or thinking, there's no doubt that we can um, really uh, um, go farther as a nation, not just uh, as, a, as a third world country. Hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Good, Mon. Now, Mon, maybe a final question about yourself and, and your own personal future. You talked a little bit about some of your plans, but where would you like to see yourself in the next five years and 10 years? What's your idea? Well, um, I have an answer to that already. Um, in the next five years, I wanted to complete my uh, commitment, my my uh, uh, tax advocacy. If it means go, uh, working uh, back again in the government, regardless of uh, the position, uh, well, not really regardless, but uh, as someone who can really uh, make a difference or influence change, then uh, I'm seriously considering that under the next administration. Um, then. Um, after that, I would um, try to not wrap up, but uh, try to uh, consolidate some of my investments and really focus on my investment portfolio so that I can prepare for my early retirement or probably just uh, marry a richer uh, wife so that uh, it will uh, consolidate our assets. Uh, that will be uh, a op better option as well. Okay, that's very interesting. And Mon, maybe you, you put me on to another question because that's <laughs> the guy to talk to as far as investments and, and things like that. There's many people we've seen, or I've certainly seen, who work hard, they're smart, good people, but just don't manage their money well. And it's such a heartbreaking thing to see them work so hard and, and do so well in life, and yet they can't retire and live comfortably. What's, what advice would you give to young people and old people on how to save and, and what, what, yeah. what's your strategies there? The thing is, stop saving if you do not have investment plan. Otherwise, you're only saving for the next iPhone model. You're only saving for your next travel extravaganza. You're only saving for your Christmas uh, party. Don't save at all. Save in order to invest and retire early. So to me, uh, if I make uh, X number, or <laughs> how do I say this without exposing? If I make uh, 100%, uh, I don't spend more than 10%. I try to save and be frugal and, uh, in, and at the same time be very cost efficient. For instance, Richard, I travel a lot, okay. but I rarely spend personal money either sponsor, government, or whatnot. Right. I don't buy as much. Uh, people ask me all the time, well, you, you, you always brag that you uh, wear Zara suit. Well, my clients give them to me. I mean, I have clients <laughs> in Spain. They, they, bring, they hand carry Zara suit. So why do I uh, have to uh, not accept it? So things like that. So don't, don't save to spend. Save to invest. Don't invest just and tell the world that you are investing. No, don't even talk about it. Because the more you talk about how much you make and the investments that you make, you won't make it. It will be superficial. The real rich people don't talk about how rich they are. Those who are really earning a lot don't even post and talk about money. Because they know that they have to be very strategic and to be careful that others might take advantage of them. And to me, if you want to manage your finances, manage first your priorities. Don't just give all your money to your parents or to, uh, to spend for a birthday party or uh, to give everyone a gift. If it will not impact your future, cut your budget. If companies where you are working for have operating budget, you, we should also have a personal budget. Like in my case, Richard, I can be very, very proud of this. You open my fridge, 
you only see sky flakes and water. <laughs> but during my quarantine with fruits, in short, I don't right. really splurge and buy just because it's available in the grocery or whatnot. And uh, if I travel, well, if I uh, if I am in a, a company car, I have my water there and I have my biscuits. I don't stop by or drop by any restaurants all the time. Most of the time, I get to eat in the lobby of hotels or restaurants because it's a client meeting. So you try to manage your priorities first. <laughs> don't, I mean, sorry for to say this, not because you saw in social media that somebody made one million by doing this. You just follow the pattern. It doesn't work that way. We no. have differences. We have we are very different in a lot of things. Like in my case, I am very generous to my family, but they cannot ask money directly from me. Huh. So I issue a check for my mom, for my sister, and beyond that, they have to have a discussion with me before they can ask for additional. In short, you also have to discipline your loved ones because sure. they are they will be your weakest weakness yeah. in, when it comes to your financial management. So I remember when I tried to to um, appease my mom because I made her feel bad and I was like trying to buy something expensive. She said, no, 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 I don't need that. Don't buy that. Just add it to my grocery budget. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll add it to your grocery budget. So I mean, that, that's one way of putting it. So if I get married, I think this is also something that I can share with my future wife that, yeah, we can enjoy and travel and all, but we have to have a budget. We have to uh, know our schedule our priorities and um, do things uh, not just for now, but also for the future. So I hope, I hope um, after the COVID, I can uh, uh, start um, working on my other uh, investments. As I've said, you don't need to discuss it to the world, but know in your heart, in your mind, that you are working now, not because you want to make money. You are working now because you want to invest in a better future for yourself and for your family. So I hope all, all the young kids, young professionals who are listening to us, Please stop buying the new models of iPhone and the bragging about your travels uh, in, uh, in uh, Singapore, in Asia, in Europe, pro using your parents' money. Start saving to invest. Start saving to invest. Don't let social media influence you. Be a good influencer. Influence people so that they will be more positive in their thinking, not on COVID, but at the same time, to really work on themselves. Invest on themselves. Improve yourself. Read a lot. Uh, train yourself and uh, think positive and be positive with your um, sentiments. Don't use social media to to brag about your new bags or new shoes. That that won't make the people who will see that won't help your future. So make sure every day, every opportunity is an investment to that better, brighter future. Very good advice, Mon. Thank you very much. And please keep doing well. I pray to the Lord God Almighty, you can really make an impact with taxes in this nation because the impact will be tremendous to everyone. So thank you again, uh, Mon. Any, uh, please, some last words from you. Uh, Richard, I, I thought you will be praying to God Almighty to give me a richer wife. Uh, so, but I think that that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I know the, the, the Lord is really good. I think uh, he would uh, find a way. <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I'm just uh, grateful, as I've said, Richard, Rebecca, thank you uh, for um, recognizing me uh, many years ago. If not for that, the world and the rest of our country would not even uh, realize that there is a Mona Brea living in, uh, in this country. But thank you, really. Well, and, uh, I, I really feel that that opened a lot of opportunities, not just for me, for our advocacy, for the, for the growth of our company. And now we have more. Uh, investors, clients, you know, uh, whenever I talk about um, uh, now, April, uh, tomorrow is April 15th. I remember before that uh, dealing with all those tax returns by myself is crazy. Now we, we process and help more than 100 tax returns, but I'm not doing a single tax return because we have grown to manage our, our business in a way that uh, more people are working with us and we get to help more people. So I hope and pray that uh, Asia CEO will also get to influence and help people like me to have that spot, to have that spot and chance uh, to let the world know of their existence and their uh, value. So thank you very much. And I will forever be grateful. And I will forever be your Asia CEO, young leader. 
<laughs> you will, Mon, and I'm glad you feel that way. But I think your your uh, tidal wave would have come, you know, <laughs> in, in any case. But I'm pleased we hopefully helped uh, along a, a little bit anyway. But thank you again, Mon. Really good to see you. Glad you're doing well, looking healthy. And yes, like thank I said, you. please keep up the great work you are doing. Thank you, Richard. And see you soon. We'll see you soon. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. That was Mana Bray, the Mana Bray, the tax whiz of Philippines, uh, telling a lot about his wife, his life, his future wives, possibly, and uh, all of his strategies of his life. So thank you very much, Mana Bray. That was going deep with me, Richard Mills. Thank you.